Hi folks, welcome to this week's uh, video. Um, I'm Howard Jones, um, recovered from my uh, my lurgy that I had last week, so uh, ready to go again. Um, this week, um, I thought I'd show you, it's a sort of clip, if you like, a speeded up version of what's going to be going out. Um, it's a, it'll be in my New Year's program for 2023, but I thought I'd just pop the image up for you. You might want to have a go at it uh, from watching this. I've put the colours up there, the watercolour list and the paper that I'm using. Um, but um, yeah, I'm going to talk you through um, this painting. It is speeded up to um, fit things into the video time that we've got available. I hope you enjoy it. Um, good luck with it. Um, if you have a go at it, do please leave your comments. Let me know how you got on. And um, please, if you're watching this for the first time, consider subscribing. Um, uh, that way I can keep these videos coming and if you hit the little bell icon you'll get immediate notification as and when I up, uh, upload my new videos. So uh, till next time, see you then. So as you can see I'm just penciling in um, my, my drawing. It's a photograph that was kindly given to me by uh, uh, a friend of mine um, the photograph will be available uh, when the actual lesson goes out um, for the new program. It'll be included in the new program for 2023. Um, I believe it's the Helston River um, down in Cornwall in the UK. So drawing out my um, drawing out my little boat here that's moored up against the the wall. Incidentally, um, when this does go out live, it won't be the same photo, obviously, um, the same video, sorry. It'll be a live event, um, so you'll see a, a fresh version of this, um, but it'll follow the same pattern. Um, And uh, of course, it'll be at normal speed. So when I refer to the photo, I just draw in what I think I can see. Some of those elements, some of those objects will be quite clear as to what they are. Small building. It's obviously, um, from studying the photograph up close, it's obviously a... Um, it's a it, it seems as though it's a place where they're hiring out surfboards, um, that sort of thing, because um, directly in front of that lovely old cottage um, there is uh, what looks like surfboards standing on end. There's a little shack obviously where they um, where they do the renting of these of these boards from. Um, now that I've got my drawing in, just putting in some of the details and this is a, a way that I like working. If you've watched um, my previous, any of my previous videos, or you've even attended um, my Zoom classes, my live Zoom classes, you'll probably be quite familiar with the way I work. Uh, I sort of draw with the paint. Once I've got my pencil drawing in, I draw with my paint to um, to infer a lot of the information rather than copy it. There's a little car there that I've just, you know, it's no more than just a couple of wheels and a window. Um, I don't always work quite this way. I don't always go in with this amount of drawn detail with the paint. Um, it depends on the subject matter. But I, and having said that, I suppose I do use this method quite a bit actually thinking about it. And it, it's something I lean towards if if I'm unsure about some of the details that I'm looking at. So I have to invent them if, if other than the things that are obviously very clear, like the little shack, like the odd little car, um, and I certainly, uh, as far as I can see, I can certainly, um, I certainly consider those shapes in front of the house to the bottom right. Um, they They look like surfboards stood on end. Um, anything I can't make sense of, I invent. 
it sort of makes sense to me. That's what that's what's really important. And uh, in the pack that goes out with my Zoom lessons the, that support the live event, um, I um, offer a lot of advice and tips on that very thing. On um, that you really need to, if if you can't understand what it is you're looking at because the details aren't there, maybe the photo. Um, hasn't picked that up too well you have to interpret things um, and as long as you make a mark that you like that you find interesting it might even refer to something um, something specific like a car or a figure or a window or whatever um, as long as you have made up your mind what it is it will work the the, the troubles and problems that we um uh, hit, that come upon, happen upon, often happen because we've had to make a decision on the fly um, that we haven't decided as to what um, what that object is prior to picking up the paint. Now, there's nothing wrong with painting on the fly and coming up with ideas on the fly. Um, so you're, you're, you're painting... Um, literally uh, intuitively for these particular areas of the painting there's nothing wrong with that but you do need a fair bit of experience in that to be able to make things up it's better if you can just to before you embark on the painting before you pick up the paintbrush to have established with the pencil work what it is what what everything is um uh, to, to as much to, to as much detail as you can you you can't you can't label everything clearly. You won't be able to, um, you know, um, outline a specific shape to tell your viewer that it is a car. But often it's enough just to hint upon um, that there is something there. The The viewer is always going to be um, more concerned with the bigger elements. The house, the, the windows, the character of the house, the little boats moored up against the wall. That's what the viewer is going to be concerned with. All those little bits that I just mentioned that you have to sometimes make up are just embellishment. Um, so it's don't don't overthink them. Um, I'm just using a little bit of white gouache into the white paint there in the background to suggest some some um, some smoke coming out the chimney. Now that might stay there. It might get lost because I decide sometimes with these backgrounds to overpaint them if I feel as though they're not in balance towards the end of the painting I, I often overpaint or pack paint back into my backgrounds I usually wait f for for the background to have dried out first before I do that so um, that's something I refer to as keeping my options open I uh, big areas like this like the background that we're looking at here um, I just like to get a generic effect, if you like. F from the photo, I could see that it was just um, a, a woodland, um, a steep woodland direct directly behind the the building and the um, and the quayside. So the effects that I'm achieving there are, are sufficient at the moment. I'm going to speed dry this, as you can see. I felt as though um, I wanted to trap what was actually on the paper at this point because um, I I felt as though I'd I'd done all the um, wet in wet work and that uh, any further brush marks now need to be wet on dry. So I'm once again making sure that I'm happy outlining most of the information some of those little marks um you know you you, you can't you, you, it's not possible to to explain what those marks are there that they 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 infer little recesses in the walls in the windows um they are the best way i can describe it is that they are what you would expect to see in a, in in this sort of scenario. Um, my advice here is probably, if you want to be able to develop this um, 
this way of creating uh, information that might not necessarily be there, but it makes for a more interesting painting. It's just to do a lot of sketches uh, and take lots of photos, do a lot of sketches. You can't rely on the photo for everything, every tiny little brush mark, you just can't. So just putting first colour into my dark boat here. Um, and that'll probably dry out not quite as dark as it looks at the moment, so I might be revisiting that before the end of the painting. But a lot of uh, a lot of this work, as you can see, is from a, a a very small brush. I say very small; it's probably a size five or seven, but it does have a very good quality point on it. I'm just inferring some movement, some ripples in the water, the mid sort of mid ground, and working down and putting those larger shape ripples. Even ripples in water have to adhere to the um, laws of perspective so the scale of those ripples increase as you as you come forward so by doing them now I'm able to um, if I want put further washes over the water because when I come to do that the, those ripple shapes will be dry so I'm mixing up a um, big shadow puddle now the actual time of this painting probably took about an hour um so you know obviously what you're seeing is a is an abbreviated or speeded up i should say i haven't actually edited anything it's just been speeded up to about three times its its speed so So um, I'm applying this mix of ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of burnt sienna, uh, mainly to the lower background, just to give some emphasis, just to pop out the um, the shapes, if you like, of the um, or the details themselves, the little shacks, the house, the the. the it's a, the shadowy areas. And I'm imagining here made up the light because the photo um, reference really had um, it was very subdued lighting. Um, there was very little evidence of um, sunlight. So, you know, this is a, a, a technique that I think is essential to learn when you live in the UK because um, your moments of capturing favorable light for your paintings are few and far between. And um, you know that your options are either to uh, take lots of photos, perhaps even set your camera if it has the um, the function to do so. Set your camera on multi-shot, where you can just hold the shutter down and uh, it fires off multiple um, pictures, photos. Um, that's one way of doing it, and just hope that you know somewhere in that lot you've got something to work with. Um, but um, I, I find, you know, I, I, I have sort of, I've often seen a fantastic light and shadow play over a, 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 over a scene and, 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 and wish that I'd, you know, only had a camera in my hand at the time to sort of capture it. Um, because it's so important, the play of light and dark shadows cast on bright surfaces is so important to uh, creating dynamic paintings. Um, so yeah, you have to you have to invent, you have to create, um, rely on memories of these images if you can. You know, develop a if you can a, 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 um, a develop that part of the the brain that, that allows you to sort of capture the photo in your mind um i'm not sure if i'm if i'm honest if that's what i do i i i, I think it's more a case of wanting to see f aesthetic patterns um that's probably the actual that's actually what's going on i think when i create these these playoff of light um the playoff of light and shadow and, you know, i've dried it out here 
um, as you can see as it's speed as I've speeded up now I've I'm just tapping a little bit of white gouache onto the uh, dry painting I've embellished certain areas with a, uh, a rigger brush and a little bit of white gouache I'd put in things like posts there were posts evident in the photo um, there's always cables, mooring ropes, and things like this uh, in these areas. So I sort of make the most um, of of light against dark. You know, the white gouache works really well against these darker backgrounds. Uh, just uh, turning my attention now really to the overall effect and balance of things uh, just mixing up once again I'm just mixing up a bit more um, of the dark green so it would be phthalo green and burnt sienna and um, sorry um, that was phthalo green and ultramarine blue and just running a little bit of a nicer color into that water just to sort of um, spice things up a little bit and similarly I'm, with the same color I'm just popping a few glazes into some of that background just so that there's some cohesion between the background mid ground and foreground and by glazing with a color like this, it's, it has to be a, well, nine times out of ten, it has to be a transparent glaze. But that turquoisey mix, I feel, really sort of brought it all together. Um, so, again, I'm just sort of weighing things up here. Probably need to put the mount around it. There we are. It's okay. I think the balance is there. As I was saying, these at this stage in the process, um, I can be, I can be sort of ninety percent happy with, with the result. I do often give some consideration to it uh, being a case of just having a rest from it taking your eyes off it and coming back to it a day later. I've just zoomed in here for you to see the inferred detail. So what I was talking about in the early stages about those little marks made off the brush with a dark mix, they, they're nothing specific, but they do um, infer that they're, um, there's more there than, than you know, it, it's an illusion. It, it, you create an illusion of busyness with my finger, damp finger, then I just smudged out the right-hand chimney a little bit. I just felt as though it was a little too hard of edge up there against the background. So now I'm decided. This is what I mean. I have decided to. Um, I was. I. I gamble. I always take risks all the time. I just wondered what it would look like if we placed a a tree. Um, to really pop the house out a little bit better. So I use the flat brush a lot for these sort of trees. This particular tree um, sort of started off here as a, a conifer type shaped tree. I'll probably come back to it. I'm just lifting some of the um, darkness out of that now in case it was um thought it was probably looking a little bit too dark so i'm just blocking out a bit more of that shape so it's not too it's not too overpowering and again i'm just reinforcing areas anything that i think will um add further dynamic to the painting Yeah, that really has popped the house out. 
So you, uh, my usual thing is this, as you can see me doing now, is to um, is get to a point where you think, well, it could be finished, and then give some consideration to those tones, because tone is so important, getting the tonal balance throughout the darkest tones, the lightest tones, the mid-tones, that's got to be right. That 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 has to be in balance. Um, and I felt that there was perhaps not enough of the darker tones for this painting to to to, um, to have the dynamics that I wanted it to have. And I like working this way. I um, the paint goes on really strong. I always have a tissue ready in my spare hand to uh, l take some of the paint off if I feel as though it's too heavy. Yeah, that that to me looks a lot better. So, hope you enjoyed this and I um, uh, hope that um, you know, you may consider perhaps joining me uh, on one of my live Zoom lessons. Uh, you just need to pop over to my website. The links will be below this video and uh love to see you there. At the very least, please uh, leave your comments as to what you thought of this this video and um, till next time good luck with your painting see you then